Hello, I'm John Tanner, Global Technology Editor for Telecom Asia. We're on the sidelines of LTE Asia here at SunTech City in Singapore. And my guest joining me right now is Anders Wanstrom. He's the subject matter expert for 3G and LTE at Ericsson. Uh, Anders, thank you very much for joining us. Now, everyone here at the show is talking about LTEA, LTE Advanced. Uh, and now LTE has already been widely deployed in many markets and uh, despite the fantastic boosts in uh, data speed and capacity, we're already seeing the first launches of LTE Advanced. So why is that? What's driving the need to move to that next level now? Yeah, the, the need to move to LTE Advanced for operators is to, to make the best of their, <coughs> of their existing spectrum assets. Uh, LTE Advanced enables carrier aggregation so you can combine different uh, parts of your spectrum that gives you a higher bit rate and it also gives you uh, better resource utilization because the load balancing is, is much more simpler in, in, in a carrier aggregation setup. Okay, so let's talk a bit about uh, the next stages of LTE in uh, detail. LTEA and then LTEB. Take us through the roadmap and the capabilities of each. Yes, yeah, so LTA, we can call it perhaps the second step in the evolution of LT. The, the, the primary thing there is, is carrier aggregation, as we just talked about, uh, which again enables the operators to maximize the, the use of their spectrum assets. Um, LTB, uh, which is based on uh, release 12 of the standard, um, m uh, improves the uh, efficiency of the network, improves the end user quality, uh, it enables device-to-device -device communication and machine-to-machine -machine communication. Uh, so it's, it's another important step in the evolution of LTE. Uh, as I mentioned a little earlier, a few operators have already launched LTEA. Can you share any case studies from any operators uh, here in Asia Pacific that you've worked with in their experience in deploying LTEA? Uh, yes, I can. Uh, we supported uh, SK Telecom, uh, who launched uh, in June this year the first LTE Advanced Network, where they aggregated two chunks of 10 megahertz each spectrum. Um, uh, one month later, we supported LG Plus, also in Korea, uh, which did a similar aggregation of 2 times 10 megahertz. So that means that both these operators in Korea now can off offer 150 megabits per second peak rates to their subscribers. Uh, we have also, um, together with Telstra, uh, shown the worst first carrier aggregation uh, between spectrum in the 1800 megahertz band and the 900 megahertz band. So uh, things are picking up uh, quite nicely in the uh, LTE advanced uh, field. Now, some people, including Ericsson, are now already starting to talk about 5G. We're at 4G now, now they're talking about 5G. And that's confused some people who thought that LTEA is 5G. Um, so tell us now for the record, what do you mean, what does Ericsson mean uh, when you say 5G? And why are we talking about it now? Yeah, so 5G we think is an enabler of the network society. But everything that can be connected is connected. So we envision a, a future with um, a lot more data is being processed, perhaps 50 billion connected devices. Uh, and 5, 5G will then be, first of all, evolution of existing technologies and perhaps some complemented technologies required um, to um, support some of the specific requirements anticipated in 2020. For example, for some, some use cases, very, very short latency. Um, so the way we we work with this is um, in a research uh, consortium called METIS. Uh, METIS is uh, a lot of the, um, several of the major vendors and operators and other research institutions who today are looking at use cases, uh, looking at the uh, requirements of, of 5G and, and um, we, we expect 5G to actually be realized around the time 2020. And what else is Ericsson doing specifically in terms of developing 5G, apart from the work that you've done with Metis? Well, can we, oh, of course, we do a lot of our own research in the, <laughs> in the area, which perhaps something I will talk about another day. Well, fair enough. And as it happens, we're out of time anyway. So, uh, Anders, uh, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, John.